Alright, today I'm going to discuss the flow behavior and the pattern of the flow in the spacing between two blades of an impeller of a pump, for example, or a, com a compressor. As you see here, uh, I've sketched two blades of impeller, something like this, and the blue region here is exactly the spacing between two blades. Uh, I want to uh, introduce the pressure di uh, di non-uniformities, the pressure distribution between these two blades. I want to, uh, to, to prove that the flow near the top of the blade has a higher pressure and uh, reversely the flow near this region has a, a lower pressure. This is the suction side of the blade and uh, this um, side is the pressure side. Also, I want to discuss the origins of uh, the slip factor, which uh, leads to the decrease of the head of the pump due to three-dimensionality of the flow. So, uh, here, uh, consider a point uh, in in this in this blue region here. Uh, this is the streamline uh, passing through that point. The S coordinate is the attached to the streamline, which is parallel to the blades of uh, the streamline. Totally follow the profile of blades. This is the direction of rotation of the impeller because this blade is backward. So the, the direction of rotation is something like this. Due to the uh, right hand rule, if the positive direction for normal to the streamline direction is uh, inward, so based on the right hand rule, the positive direction of the z, z, z coordinate normal to page is outward, out of the page, because uh, this is the right hand rule. The other point is about the uh, direction of uh, N, which is normal to the streamline, so this is the direction of N. This is the direction of R. R is the radial coordinate because this blade rotates uh, about uh, an axis or a shaft, so the radial coordinate is normal to the shaft. So we have dr, which is the differential element along the radial direction. DS, which is the differential element along the streamline, which is parallel to the blades. And this is the normal to the streamline direction or normal to the curvature of the, uh, normal to the curvature of the blade or in the direction of the radial direction of the blades. So we have two curvatures, uh, or two, um, uh, curvilinear motion of Floyd. The first one is due to the rotation of the pump around uh, an axis and the other one is due to the curvature of the blade which obliges the floy to follow the blades and uh, move along a curve, uh, curved path. Okay, R is the, this, the radial distance of this point from the uh, center of the shaft. But R is the radius of curvature of the blades. We have a an angle here, which is theta. And this angle in here is 90 degrees. This is the geometrical details of the uh, flow between it in interblade spacings. Okay, let's uh, start to write the momentum equation or the navier stokes equation, neglecting the viscose terms. And at the, as a result, I will gain a physical interpretation about uh, the distribution of pressure and uh, velocity uh, between the blades. Okay, the S momentum equation, S is a direction uh, along the straight line. So uh, the, these are the, iner uh, the accelerations or inertia terms. This is the density, the flow is a steady or a steady state, so this term is zero. Uh, these two terms are advection terms. The second one is zero because the velocity component normal to the streamline is zero, while this one is not zero. 
Uh, w is the component of velocity along the straight line, uh, partial derivative of W with respect to S, which can be written as the partial derivative of W squared over 2. This is the centripetal acceleration. Consider that we have three relative accelerations. Uh, the linear acceleration is zero because uh, this bond rotates uh, at a fixed point in space. But uh, the centripetal acceleration and the Coriolis acceleration are, um, are non-zero. We have two centripetal accelerations because we have two curvatures. Uh, whenever you oblige anything to move along a curved path, the centripetal acceleration will appear. Though we have two centripetal accelerations, the first one is due to the rotation of the pump around an axis, and the other one is due to the curvature of the blades. In radial blades, uh, when the blades are straight uh, and they don't have curvature, the, uh, one of these centripetal accelerations will vanish. Okay, this is the component of the centripetal acceleration due to the rotation of pump along the S coordinate. As you see, this is the radial coordinate and component of the centripetal acceleration, which is inward. Uh, or the projection of this vector along S uh, is proportional to the cosine of this angle here. So R omega squared is the centripetal acceleration, omega is the uh, angular velocity of the pump, cosine of theta due to the geometrical uh, relations here, cosine of this angle is the ratio of VR over dS. So VR over dS which is because the angular velocity is supposed to be constant, so uh, this can be written as uh, r dr. So uh, d over ds omega squared r squared over 2 r omega r times omega is circumferential velocity uh, shown by u, capital U. So this term can be written as the d over ds u squared over 2. Uh, at the other side of the equation, we have the pressure gradient term uh, minus uh, partial derivative of P uh, with respect to S. The viscose terms are assumed to be zero. Okay, combine uh, these terms, we have three terms uh, in the equation. All of them contain partial derivative with respect to S. So you can combine these equations and gather them in one side of the equation. Uh, and then integrate with respect to s. So you will obtain that the sum of these terms is a constant, which is the uh, kind of the Bernoulli's equation, or the extended version of the Bernoulli's equation in relative motion. In another video, uh, I have presented eight different forms of the Bernoulli's equation. You can uh, review that video. This is one of uh, versions of the Bernoulli's equation containing the centripetal acceleration. Okay, then uh, take the derivative of this equation with respect to n, n is the normal direction, uh, normal to the streamline direction. The derivative of this term is, uh, when it goes to the other side of the equation, is minus w, partial derivative of w with respect to n, and nothing more. I need this relation in the n momentum conservation law. The other equation is the conservation of linear momentum in n direction and is the normal direction to the uh, blades or the coordinate along the radius of curvature of blades. Again, these are uh, inertia terms. Uh, this is the density of the fluid. The time derivative or the local derivative is again zero because we have derivatives of zero. These are components of the velocity normal to the streamline, which are zero. Derivatives of zero are zero. There are three uh, accelerations here or relative acceleration. This, this is the centripetal acceleration, though due to the curvature of the blades. W is the component of the velocity along the streamline. R is the radius of curvature of the blades. If the uh, blades are straight or radial, the radius of curvature will go to inf uh, infinity, and this term will be zero. 
Right. This is the, the other uh, centripetal acceleration, or the other component of the centripetal acceleration, this time along the n direction. So, so r omega squared is the radial acceleration in this direction. I have to find the component of this radial centripetal acceleration along the uh, n direction. So I need to compute the cosine of this angle, which is the sine of this one. So cosine of 90 minus theta plus the third uh, relative acceleration is the Coriolis acceleration uh, twice the cross product of omega and uh, velocity when you have simultaneously you have uh, the linear and the angular motions such as what happens in this form because the uh, flowing between blades has a linear motion and simultaneously we have a r uh, rotating motion so the, the acceleration the Coriolis acceleration is expected to appear okay and the other side of the equation contains only the pressure term minus the pressure derivative with respect to n plus zero zero is the viscose term which is neglected in our sign of 19 mi uh, minus uh, theta is uh, is the cosine of this angle is the ratio of dr and dn so the cosine of this angle is dr over dn pay attention to this minus uh, sign because the positive direction of r which is outward and the positive direction of n which is based on our right hand rule is inward or reverse so uh, I have to put a negative sign or minus sign there to uh, consider these opposite directions of coordinates okay again omega is constant and r dr this term which is the centripetal com acceleration component in n direction is converted to or simplified to this equation omega is the uh, rotate angular velocity vector which is in z direction so it is positive uh, and omega k k is the unit vector in z direction cross product uh, v is the velocity of the fluid which is uh, equal to w s s is the direction of the streamline the cross product of k and s based on the cyclic uh, rotation is uh, because k cross product s is acid acyclic so k cross product s is minus n so the Coriolis acceleration is proportional to twice omega w in negative n direction so the Coriolis acceleration has no component in s direction and it just appears in the n momentum equation and in uh, negative n direction so you can omit n because these to terms are all in n direction again uh, you, you can divide the equation by density and the density is constant so uh, this term will be re rewritten here and the other acceleration this is the Coriolis acceleration in, uh, and this one is the centripetal acceleration due to the curvature of blades and the last term is the centripetal acceleration due to the rotational motion of, ro rotational, uh, motion of the uh, inlet. Okay, again you have a partial derivative with respect to n here and here, you, so you can combine these two terms in one side of the equation. As you said, this term inside the derivative is completely similar to this one. So you can substitute the, uh, this term in the left-hand side of the equation by the second-hand side of this relation. And also divide both sides of the equation by W. You can easily find um, this final relation which shows that the um, variation of W, which is the velocity in, uh, inside the plates, in n direction, and is this direction, equals minus twice the omega, which is the rotational speed of the pump, minus w over r. So, uh, if I want to discuss the non-uniform velocity distribution outside the impeller, I have to compute the derivative of w with respect to n. Velocity at all points uh, at the outlet of this impeller is constant, so 
the flow is one dimensional. This is an ideal case and uh, I want to correct this ideal case and take into consideration the non-uniformities of velocity outside the place. So this relation shows that um, velocity um, at, the, at the exit of near the trailing edge of the blade is non-uniform. If W goes to zero or the um, W represents the flow rate of the pump, then you will see that the non-uniformity increases because the, uh, neg the, the negative term in this relation is reduced and the positive term becomes more dominant. And the other point here is that if the omega or the rotational speed of the pump increases, it means that again the circulatory motion or the relative eddy concept, uh, please review the relative eddy concept, the relative eddy inside the pump strengthens and the non-uniformity of the <coughs> velocity at the output increases. Or uh, and also the other point here is that the, this term, uh, suppose that the first term is greater than the next one, pay attention to this minus line here, so the uh, variation of the velocity with respect to n is a negative, uh, is a negative parameter. So uh, by increasing n, the value of w decreases. So we have a, a larger value of velocity at near, near, near the top of the blade and smaller value of W uh, near the trailing edge of the next blade or the previous blade based on the direction of rotation. Uh, another point here is that uh, based on this relation, if the this term or the derivative of W with respect to N is negative, so, uh, and also you know that W is a positive uh, parameter. Based on this minus sign here, the second side of this equation is, again, is a, is a positive. So the variation of pressure with respect to N is positive. So uh, by increasing the value of N, pressure increases. So we have a high pressure zone here and a low pressure zone here. Based again, something. Uh, so we have a pressure side at the top of the blade and the, the suction side or the low pressure side at the bottom of the blade. The other point here is that if the radius of curvature of the pump in increases in this relation, this term uh, will gradually vanish. For example, in radial blades or a, a, straight, blade, uh, a straight blades or radial blades, the uh, positive term becomes greater and more dominant. So by uh, increasing the radius of curvature of the blade, the non-uniformity of the flow between blades increases. Also pay attention that based on the reduction of W with respect to N, uh, if this re reduction is more dominant near the pressure side, it will lead, it may lead to the creation of a region near the pressure side with negative velocity. This is a backflow or the reverse flow, which is completely different from the separation of flow due to the separation of the boundary layer. Because in our analysis, we have neglected the viscose term. So this analysis has nothing to do with the viscose or the term or the boundary layer analysis. So this creation of this negative velocity region near the pressure side is due to the uh, has none of viscose origins and just is related to the distribution of uh, relative accelerations and the reduction of velocity by increasing n, which may lead to the creation of a rotating zone near the pressure side of the blade.